Welcome back to the 2014 Sprint Promotion Tournament live from Los Angeles. It's come down to a winner-take-all Game 5 between Team Coast and The Walking Zed for the 7th spot in the NALCS. Before we head to the Rift, I want to get your thoughts on the series so far. We got a Game 5 on our hands. Very yeah. cool. Uh, let's start by talking about the Bix, uh, Bix, the Pix events. It's been a long day coming out of both teams in that last game. Yeah, so I really like that Walking Zed has identified their key playmakers. So they gave a very aggressive, high-pressure mid laner to Bishu, who's been doing exceptionally well against uh, Shifter this whole series so far. You give him Ziggs, he's going to put a lot of pressure down there, got an early turret. Uh, also, Izuki has been playing phenomenal against Zion Spartan. He's won his lane multiple times now, and they said, okay, go play Kha'Zix and go carry actual team fights with that. Uh, TWZ identified that very well, and that was a huge part of the success in Game 4. Uh, I thought it was really strange that they gave Bishu Ziggs. Uh, I felt like the other bans were kind of wasted because not only is Ziggs kind of stronger than the other champions that Coast was trying to ban out, but I think Coast's strategy coming in was he won't first pick Ziggs. We can get in our, in our first rotation, but because uh, TWZ was blue side, they first picked the only mid that was available for Bishu, and that ended up coming back to bite Coast because their only answer was really LeBlanc, and as you saw, LeBlanc can't farm. She had two and a half items as the game was over, while Bishu had like five items. You also had a, a remark about the leveling of LeBlanc, uh, or Shifter leveling LeBlanc. Yeah, Rockets. Shifter, um, well, Link, generally, he maxes W because LeBlanc has a really hard time pushing, and you lose only a little bit of kill potential while you maintain the ability to like counter push if you need it. And as you saw that game, 15, 18 minutes into the game, Shifter had barely 100 CS, whereas Bishu had 200 despite dying. So, like, even though he got solo killed, that 80, like 50 CS difference that uh, ended up making up for way more than the kill in gold. Uh, going into the next game is going to be Team Coast first pick. And if we focus again on that mid lane, I kind of feel that the game before they found the edge maybe of Bishu's champion pool by mm -hmm. all those mids would have banned out. He had to go to Katarina and that didn't work out. How much of a factor will that be? I think this is actually pretty important because... Uh Again, that's sort of going back to T TWZ identifying their key playmakers, and one of them being Bishu. Um, you saw when he was on Katarina. Katarina doesn't start things by herself. She needs someone else to go make that happen. Uh, and unfortunately, Kez wasn't having a very good game. Bobby Hank Hill and support were having a very good game. And so uh, if you push uh, Bishu back on one of those more passive or follow-up champions, you get like a first pick Ziggs in there, or you get another highly aggressive uh, lane-sufficient champion like Syndra, uh, in there for Shifter, he can hold on, not throw away his lane, and then also continue to be that playmaker and try to hold down Bishu, who has been uh, a key part of TWZ. A pattern I've noticed across these four games is not only is Zan getting kind of outlaned by Yuzuki consistently, but he's playing like really reactively. He's He wants to be split pushing 24-7, as you saw. Zion, Zion being Zion Spartan in this series especially is he's just splitting a lane, and yeah, he'll take some towers, and he'll put a lot of pressure on that lane, but he's reacting to what TWZ is doing always. He's never the one to make the play, even though he's probably, a lot of the time, the strongest person on his team. And if you really want to carry your team, it's not by split pushing. That was like old school season one, season two, Hotshot GG style. Nowadays, you group, you're really strong, you're the strongest person on the team, you, you lead the charge, you initiate the fight, and you carry your team that way. So I don't think Zion's taking the correct approach, because it, clearly it's not working. TWZ is grouping five, they're taking objectives like as a team, while Zion is Splitting. Talking about taking objectives, Baron, again, a huge factor. Uh, Baron, give it and take it away, and we got a great replay to illustrate that. Yeah, let's put this up on your screen. This is the first big Baron sort of uh, attempt here. So I want to point out uh, how a Baron dance is sort of supposed to be done. So normally, uh, there's two main ways to do Baron. So number one is you go and take it. Uh, which we had seen Coast do before. They snuck it with two people. The other way is you actually set a trap at Baron. So um, three of the members of TWZ are doing it right. So uh, Yezuki and Kez are doing a pretty good job of taking down Baron. It's at half. They would have won. Nidus is sitting on his own pink ward. He's waiting to counter gank. But the problem is Bobby Hank Hill and Bishu are not setting up for some kind of counter gank. They're actually sort of trying to bait in mid lane. And the problem is that this whole thing gets spotted by Coast. Daydream is going to run in and like hey, are people doing Baron? And no one's there to punish him for checking this, which completely allows Coast to stop this Baron attempt. Let's roll the clip and Devil walk us through what happens. So, yeah, in this situation, you see Coast knows now, now that they're doing Baron, and they know that they can easily push them off. Kez is so low, all you have to do is get the smite dead. That's, that is what Coast is looking for right now. Try to get that smite down so that they can't finish the Baron because Zion's getting bottom for free. If you look on the minimap right now, the inhib tower just fall. Okay, they're back off Baron. They don't need to go forward anymore. After that, what happens is you see that they disengage from Baron. Perfect. You get 
two tier two towers bottom and an inhib for free. They didn't get a single objective. And it's all just because TWZ is like planning around Baron was kind of poor. If they had everybody inside the Baron pit, the second that they went uh toward the Baron, it was a free kill and then they go back on Baron and finish it. But what ended up happening is they were like doing three different things. It was like two of them or one of them was sitting trying to like pick off the thresh, two of them were pushing down mid, and two of them were doing Baron. So it was really uncoordinated and that was like one of the biggest points of that game was just seeing like Oh, TWZ's decision making around Baron maybe isn't the best, but they still managed to clinch it out. Yeah, because Team yeah. Coast's decision making around Baron was also <laughs> not perfect. So, yeah. guys, yeah. game five, everything on the line for getting back in ALCS for Team Coast or for getting that spot for the Walking Zed. The momentum is in favor of the Walking Zed, I would say. Yeah, it is. Um, I think Coast has a really good shot at this one. I would still vote Coast to win this matchup. I think they focus on putting Shifter on a self-sufficient lane champion, so you can just farm and, and be safe. I think get Zyna Playmaker, um, probably put Nintendo on Olaf, and focus on getting Fusion ahead. Those are the four points that I would take that would get uh, Coast the win here. Yeah, definitely. I think they need to identify who really isn't carrying their weight. You know, why are they losing these games? And I think right now it's Zion. He's more of a liability than like a playmaker or like a positive force on the team for objectives at least. And it's an objective focused meta right now. So like they need to really think about how they're going to approach this next game and try not to play so passively. I feel like they're just waiting around like, oh, just wait for Zion to take a tower and then TP in. That's, I don't know. I feel that's such a strange way to approach the game, especially in such a high pressure situation like this. Oh, thank you guys. It is on to game five in this decisive series. It's going to be an amazing game. And I think we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have an amazing